What's happening? My name is Austin Williams, and I'm in San Diego, California, San Diego County. This is the comedy video. Itty bitty bo, bo dee bee dee bee, yaddy yaddy dee do. Boom. What's happening? Check it out. I'm a whistleblower. <laughs> Alright, now. I had to wait a little while before it uh, warmed up because it's it's pretty cold out at night now here in San Diego County. I'm hiking. I'm saving for a mobile home. I'm attempting to. Hold on. I am what is known as a targeted individual. And targeted individuals can be Googled and YouTubed. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I woke up a little congested. Now... The reason why I'm acting goofy, innocent, which I am, and uh, comical and silly is because this is, in part, a comedy video. But it more than likely will turn into an informative video as well. <laughs> Check it out. What I'm doing right now <coughs> is I'm feeding my birdies. I'm preparing to do so. I buy very cheap bread at the, uh, off the uh, discount shelf. <coughs> at the supermarket, excuse me, uh, usually 49 cents uh, for a loaf, when I can afford to do so, and then I crumple the bread up into itty bitty pieces to feed my birdies. Check it out. I got a family of three squirrels, a whole slew of birds, my babies, and an itty bitty mouse, he's this big, he's not long, he's just, he's this big in size, in reference to, he's literally just this big. Okay? He's not long. He's just this big. Okay? <laughs> he's literally that big. And I think he's an orphan. And, uh, it's my duty. Okay? They're my, and, and a bunny rabbit. It's, it, they're my only friends. My only physical friends. My only real friends. Because they don't try to hurt me. Uh, I'm in San Diego right now as I speak. That's right. I'm no, in fact, I guess, well, the, the best way to say it is that since I'm in San Diego County, that means I'm not in Santa Cruz, I'm not in Chula Vista. I mean, well, Chula Vista is actually part of San Diego County, but I think you get the point of the matter. So, I I had to wait until it, uh, I had to wait until it, um, uh, I had to wait until it warmed up before I could, uh, uh before I could open up my tent. Oh. And, um... Uh, this morning I'm taking it easy. It's, I'm, it's Veterans Day. Yeah. Now, the Bible says we're not supposed to salute anybody, so I don't, but I will put it to you this way. My heart, my prayers, my soul, uh, prays for, uh, veterans because of the... Did you know that 22 veterans commit suicide every day? That's right. It's unconscionable. So, if we ever see a homeless person out on the street who's down on his luck, uh, if you can afford to give him anything, even a nickel. Did you know that a Ramey noodle only costs 25 cents? That's right. You know, I try my best. I want you to listen to this. Check this out. This is the length of what it's like to be an organized stalking, gang stalking target. Let's just listen to this. Every now and then I go down to the law library in <coughs> downtown San Diego in order to research the evidence I got so I can uh, decipher what penal code is attached to the evidence. Okay? And on my way down there, and then when I go to leave there, I see homeless people. And there was this one little short Mexican guy He's carrying around a black bag. He was, uh, every single time I saw him up, up until the last time I saw him, he was wearing these really beat up black sweat, sweatpants, carrying a black bag. Uh, he looked kind of grubby. Okay, he's homeless. And he was going through all the garbage cans looking for bottles so he could turn them in probably to eat. And when I first noticed him, I thought to myself, there ain't, no, there ain't no reason why a human being should be living like this. Okay? Especially when you got all these banksters committing the criminality they're, they're committing and getting away with. And then you got human beings living out of garbage cans. So 
I gave him some money. I yelled across the street and he came over and I gave him a few bucks. And then, um, and then about a month ago, when I was in the area, it was around August 15th, I was in the area. And, uh, I saw him again. I yelled to him, I go, hey, because I wanted to give him some more money. He, and he walks up to me and he gaslights me with physical gestures. And then he goes, what? What do you want? Yeah, listen to this. There's a, there's a point to this story, so just listen. And I thought, well, I just wanted to help you out. And then he just ignored me and kept walking. Now, the last time I saw this guy was right in front of the law library. And he walked by me. And I'm not going to say if he said anything to me or not. But he was wearing jeans this time. So somebody gave him some help. Okay. And uh, what do you think the point of the story is? Concerning why I'm telling you what I'm telling you. Organized stalking and gang stalking targets are observed in real time at all times. That's right. That's how they can keep the isolation of a targeted individual constant. Because they got to be able to deduce if a targeted individual is, is having any kind of normal, healthy interactions with anybody. Because that's usually how friendships can start. Is by either being introduced to somebody or sitting at a bus stop and talking to somebody. And if you realize you got common interest, you might see him again on the bus and then maybe again. And then you might eventually exchange phone numbers and so on and so forth and then become friends. These people do not want targeted individuals to have one friend, not one friend, because then that friend could advocate for the target or in even be a witness in reference to anything that happens to a target when the targeted individual is out and about in the community. The only way that these individuals, just like human traffickers, how they isolate men and young men and women and kids in environments in order to human traffic them, they have to isolate them including even isolating them in poverty, which they will eventually totally, I have no doubt in my mind whatsoever that they will take me off of Social Security. That's right, I've been gaslighted, which means I've been gang stalked inside of multiple Social Security offices in three different states. Okay, now, um, why did they do this with this homeless guy? Think about this. If you give somebody who's down and out some money, okay, and then, the next time you see that person, they're mean to you, and they're rude to you, okay? And they're doing things to you that have already been connected to a crime that's happened to you. Would you feel mentally raped? Would you feel like a fool? Menticide is one of the main objectives of gang stalking, okay? That's right, they want to make you feel like a fool, they want to make you feel mentally raped. And they also want to taunt and flaunt they want to taunt you about what they do by using people that you've even helped, okay, to gaslight you the next time they see you after you help them on a previous occasion. And they also do this in order to be able to show the targeted individual their influence in the community. Basically what they're trying to say is that if you help this homeless person, the next time you see this homeless person, they will gaslight you because we were even able to get to them. That's right. My name is Leslie Williams. I'm in San Diego County, San Diego, California. So when you when you look at the extremes these freaks will go to, the, ex, the, the extremes that they will go to. One time I was on my way from the law library riding my bike, which is to go to the bus stop, which is one block away, okay, to get back to where I was going, okay. And this guy, he was wearing an African hat with different colors. I think it was like yellow, green, and green, and uh, yellow and green, and yellow, green, and those are the only two colors I remember. It was like a Jamaican type, Jamaican type knit hat he had on his head. And as, as I was going to the bus stop, he was coming up behind me and I, hang on a second. He was coming up behind me and as I went to go turn my bike on the sidewalk because I didn't want to run into a bunch of bikes that were parked at a bike rack, I had to turn and since he was behind me, he would have ran into me unless I turned, saw him and said, excuse me. And he goes, don't worry about it, sweetheart. Okay, okay. I go, okay, well, thank you anyways. The, ne the last time I went to that bus stop, guess what they did? They literally used that guy and another guy with these Jamaican hats, same exact hats, to gaslight me on the corner for me to see them doing that. That's right. 
But when, I leave, when I'm in the law library, and then when I leave it to go and unlock my bike, and then when I take my bike on the sidewalk to go one block away to the bus stop, I am gaslighted in the law library, which means I'm subject to gang stalking methods. I am gaslighted as I'm unlocking my bike. I'm gaslighted as I go to ride my bike on that just on that one sidewalk that's a block away to the bus stop. I'm gaslighted on that sidewalk and at the bus stop and by people that ride their, uh, their cars by. This is what organized stalking, gang stalking targets experience on a daily basis. Now, you might think to yourself, why would these people going to be going through all of this to, to harass a targeted individual? For multiple purposes. And if you research these criminalities and research targeted individuals' blogs and YouTube videos, <coughs> excuse me, you'll clearly be able to see that organized stalking and gang stalking targets are subjected to gaslighting methods. Gaslighting methods are basically methods that are done to psychologically harass a target by and including the intent is also to psychologically undermine the target's ability to figure out how all this can be being managed. Okay? It's also done to alter the target's perceptions about their worldview in reference to society. Because they want to make the target individual believe that every person that's gaslighting them is against them and connected to the same crimes that are happening to them because the individuals they use on a daily basis are told to do the same exact thing that the next person they get to use to harass a target individual does. That's right. Now I'm talking about mostly sensitization methods. Okay. Now, uh, to get an idea that I'm telling you the truth in a fast uh, introductory way is to go to YouTube and type in Bonnie... Uh, no, go to YouTube and type in uh, Oceanside, California, gang stalking Bonnie. There's an individual by the name of Bonnie who's being gang stalked in Oceanside. Oceanside is in San Diego County. Now, they got her sensitized to colors, the color red, and uh, Oceanside police cars, and Carlsbad. And, and it also looks like some California Highway Patrol cars as well in some of her other videos. Now, you might think to yourself, how can a person be sensitized to a color or to a police car? Well, what they basically do is anchor an association in a target's mind, okay? Usually through, uh, uh, it's multiple methods, okay? Uh, case in point, uh, what they can do is use what is called the direct conversation method. Now, what is the direct conversation method? The direct conversation method is a method where, but in the following description is not the only thing they use the direct conversation method for, is where as a result of a targeted individual's home being broken into, their computer being hacked, their cell phone being hacked, and their landline phone being hacked, every single thing that a targeted individual does on these four, uh, three separate communication avenues and their physical home being invaded, which means being entered when they're not at home and things being read, letters they wrote, journals they might have wrote, emails they might have wrote, things they might have researched online, things they said on their phone, whether it be a landline or cell phone, these individuals monitor everything that a targeted individual does. And the reason why they do that is so they can take inserts. Like, say if I go on the internet and I research, uh, or say if I go on, the, uh, go on the internet and I go into one of my email accounts and I say that my uncle just died, uh, he had a heart attack on the golf course, and his name is Ed. And in fact, this example actually can be Googled. It's where I'm getting it, where I got it from. And then um, I'm on the phone or I write an email and I'm stating that my Uncle Ed just died of a heart attack on a golf course. They know it as a result of reading the emails and listening in on the phone calls. They will then use duped dummies or syndicated members to get along my route to re-mention that inside of a conversation they're having either with each other or on their phone. This is done to get the targeted individual's attention because what they're parroting, which means you know how a parrot, you know a bird, a parrot, will mimic what you say? They mimic what you do in the privacy of your phone, your computer, or anything, you personal information that you have in your home, things you might have written down. And they enter the home, read it, and then will tell individuals to get around you in the community as a result of this tracking and surveillance of you to parrot, re-mention, what is personal concerning what you know, okay? That's done to get the targeted individual's attention through what they hear. 
once the target individual hears it, because they're meant to hear it by the individuals they get to say it around the target, in the target's physical proximity, the target hears it and therefore looks to the person who's saying it. When that happens, they will engage in repetitive words, phrases, statements, or physical gestures. Then they repeat this on a daily basis every single place the targeted individual goes. Anywhere between one month, to two months, to three months, to four months, to five months, to six months, even a year. Now, the reason why they're doing this is to form associations to words, phrases, physical gestures, sounds, colors, okay, statements, certain people, and even certain types of people, like punks, you know, people that appear like they're punks, you know, the way they act and dress, gangster type looking people who might literally look like a gangster. Okay, I'm talking about like the, the, you know, the just, I think you know what I mean, okay? So basically what they do is they form associations in a target's mind as a result of making sure the targeted individual either sees or hears certain things that are constantly repeated every day, everywhere they go. It's called sensitization methods. Then what they do is just make sure that the repetition continues on a daily basis everywhere they go. This in turn makes the targeted individual feel stalked as a result of how much they either see and or hear what's been sensitized, including colors, including police cars or police cars dedicated to a specific police agency. That's why they're doing what they're doing to Bonnie in California, Oceanside. If you went to YouTube right now and typed in Oceanside, California, gang stalking Bonnie, you'll run across Bonnie's YouTube video. You clearly hear her say that every time she leaves the house and everywhere she goes, she sees either red cars, red trucks, uh, red vans, people wearing red, people wearing red, and uh, certain specific police department agencies cars constantly circling her. Now, again, what you got to understand is they anchor what's associated, they sensitize the target to it, and then represent it. This keeps the target mentally aware of it. They constantly think about it as a result of every time they're presented with what's been sensitized. And as a result, the target is kept in a non-stop, constant neural mental loop every time they see, see and or hear what they've been sensitized to. It's a clever way to make you feel harassed and stalked as a result. That's right. So, what I know... Don't you know what they're doing with me? They're literally having the stupid audacity to get along all my routes. Okay, and repeat gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalk, oh my god, gang stalk, gang stalk, oh my god, gang stalk, in that way. And then they'll sprinkle it with other words like weird and crazy as they're doing it. That's right, and I got 700 audio files to prove it. So why won't the San Diego police make a police report about this? <laughs> Let me give you an example of what happened towards me. Hang on a second. On October 15, 2013, at a Jack in the Box off of Rosecrans and Nimitz Boulevard. Hear me out on this one, because this one's going to blow your mind. Go to Google and type in businesses and gang stalking. Jack in the Box and gang stalking. Walmart and gang stalking. You can also call it organized stalking. Okay? Now, and to show you that these crimes are happening, organized stalking and, and even being written about, gang stalking is mentioned right in the, na in the, na in the t title of this book. Okay? Organized stalking is mentioned in every page in this book. Organized stalking is also mentioned in this book, along with gang stalking. So, that should tell you right there that I'm telling you the truth. Now, you can go to Google and discover how the business community, universities, public libraries, any stores can be brought on in, in these campaigns as a result of the perpetrator or perpetrators having employment descriptions in the system that has the influence to get anybody's cooperation. And if you don't believe me, in part, concerning how they operate, go to YouTube and type in Listen to a Stranger. Just do it. You'll see how easy it is to get anybody to do anything for an individual who has a position of, uh, uh, who has an appearance of having a power position of authority, an individual with a badge. And look at what he's asking these people that are going into a market. He's asking them to do He's asking people who are going into a market to do specific things for him towards a woman who's already in the market, a business. And the things he's asking them to do is to take her wallet and to separate her from her child. 
what can happen as a result of an individual's wallet being stolen, what can happen to a baby as a result of a baby being stolen. And that YouTube video is dedicated to expose in part how gang stalking operates. I was in Jack in the Box off of Rosecrans and Nimitz Boulevard in Point Loma, California again on October 15, 2013. Every single time that I went into that Jack in the Box, including the first time and every subsequent time I was in that Jack in the Box on every date, with the, every time I went in there, individuals would come in and constantly repeat, gang stalk, gang stalk, oh my god, gang stalk, gang stalk, oh my god, we're crazy, gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalk, oh my god, in that way for the whole time duration while I was in there. And that's not including the individuals that, had, they, that they had come in there to gaslight me with physical gestures. Okay. Go to YouTube and type in learning disabled woman catches gang, gang stalker admitting sent to harass. Read comments. That's part of the title, read comments. Okay. And the read comments part of the title means read what's read and look at what's in the description of that YouTube video and cross-reference what's in the description of that YouTube video because there's a YouTube video that's in the description of that YouTube video. Look at that video and cross-reference the published date of that video to what was caught by uh, me, uh, the host video that's titled Learning Disabled Woman Catches Gang Stalker Admitting Sent to Harass is a video that's concerning me catching three teenagers admitting they were put on a bus route on January 28, 2012 to engage in these physical gestures months after I made two separate videos of me exposing that it was already happening to me months before I caught these three teenagers admitting to what they admitted to. Okay? Now, one of those two videos is in the description of that YouTube video. That's what read comments mean. So, also in this Jack in the Box, the employees and the management played a role in the gang stalking by repeating gang stalking and their physical gestures and oh my god, every single time while I was in there. An event finally transpired t towards me and the management when I was in there on the 15th. I, I walked out of the Jack in the Box and called the... Uh, yeah, between... I was being gang stalked on that day on October 15th, just like I was getting stalked in every other time I went in a jack in box And check this out. On numerous separate previous occasions before October 15th, I caught this method being utilized around me every single time in that jack in box on audio file and on numerous separate dates on video file of it wide openly happening as I was eating. I took out my video camera, discreetly set it on the table as I was eating, turned the record button on and caught it on numerous separate occasions in that jack in the box and then uploaded those videos to YouTube. Now cyber surveillance is a method of gang stalking. So they knew it. So basically what they started to do was having the manager harass me concerning normal appearing excuses. That's, that's right. So I con finally confronted him about it and he, and he banned me from the store. And as this was trans... And as this event was transpiring, I was being gaslighted by a, a young man who was standing right there in the lobby as I was ha having the verbal interactions with the Jack in the Box manager who was banning me. As I was being banned, an individual was standing there who had already come in the, in, in the Jack in the Box right before the incident occurred. He was gaslighting me with physical gestures. He was trying to aggravate the situation is what he was doing. Okay? Now, uh... So I called the police, and the police come out, and I said, look, I got over 700 separate audio files of this being set around me everywhere I go, every single day, and I told them that I got multiple video files and audio files of it happening in this Jack in the Box on numerous occasions, including today's date. And you know what they said? They said, well, I tell you what we can do. How about we call a psychologist out to the scene here for you? My name is Leslie Williams. I'm in San Diego, California. Go to YouTube right now and type in Learning Disabled Woman Exposes Evidence of Gang Stalking. Then go to YouTube and type in Learning Disabled Woman Exposes Flat Out Evidence of Gang Stalking. Go to YouTube and type in Learning Disabled Woman Exposes the Direct Conversation Method. Learning Disabled Woman Exposes Evidence of Gang Stalking. Learning Disabled Woman Exposes Gang Stalking. And look at how many videos you will see of me uploading audio files to video files of gang stalking constantly be sent around me everywhere I go for the last year and a half. And in, in fact, go to YouTube and type in Learning Disabled Woman Exposes Gang Stalking at Jack in a Box. <coughs> Excuse me. That's the Jack in a Box I was talking about. So, how crazy am I? I don't think so. Now, diagnosing a targeted individual with mental disorders. That's right, like schizophrenia or bipolar or schizoaffective or 
persecutory delusional disorder or delusional disorder is their way to discredit the target on paper concerning what's factually actually happening to a target because they have to make it appear that the target's crazy. Now, the system is illegally using businesses to aid and abet in this harassment and they gotta in turn turn around and, and circle their wagons to protect the businesses, the universities, the public libraries, the transportation services that they're illegally and criminally using for these harassments. And the only way that they can protect them, okay, is to call the target crazy. That's right. That's right. So, in your research, hold on. Go to YouTube and type in what I've described. Eventually, I'll be putting in a bunch of cooperating material in the description of this YouTube video. So you can see that this method is happening around me everywhere I go. Being caught on audio file, okay. I wear a tape recorder on me every day, okay, every day. Now, this same exact method that was caught inside the Jack in the Box was caught inside of the San Diego Police Department headquarters on July 24th, 2013, when I went there for the first and only time in my entire life. And what was caught in there, I predicted would be caught in a video file at this location before I even left it to go to it. That's right. Also, the same exact method, it's caught every day. Okay, the same exact, everywhere I go, the same exact method was caught inside of the San Diego City Council meeting chambers when I was in there on August 24, 2013. And, uh, and a reporter by the name of Jessica Miles from Minnesota, who's also experiencing gang stalking, saw the blog that I made concerning that and the video, uh, the video URL addresses that are put in that blog. She saw it online and posted it on her blog. A reporter by the name of Jessica Mills for KTPS in Minnesota, she's being gang stalked. The police are all over her blog. Well, if you look at enough of her blogs, you'll see that she linked one of my blogs of me being gang stalked inside of the San Diego City Council meeting chambers on August 24th. She linked my blog into her blog because she took the time to, to go to that blog, look at the YouTube videos, see that it was happening, and then posted that link into her blog. That's right, because she's trying to prove what's happening to her. So, as a result of us targeted individuals exposing the criminalities that are happening to us, we are set up to be arrested, jailed, put in on psychiatric floors, put in county mental health. That's right, all based on staged events that they bring about using anybody, the business community, students at universities, staff at university, guests at universities, public libraries, including staff, securities at businesses. They will use anybody and everybody to work in a tag teaming cooperation in order to bring about an event towards a target, in order to bring about a result. Arresting a target, banning a target from the place that the, that the incident is happening at, that's right, or putting them into county mental health, or a neighborhood area hospital psychiatric floor. So, when you research online how I was gang stalked at this jack in the box, you'll see that I was telling you the truth. So why won't the San Diego Police take one police report? All you gotta do is ask yourself this question. Why is gang stalking mentioned on the cover of this book? Why is it mentioned throughout the entire book? Why is organized stalking, which is just another name for gang stalking, mentioned throughout every page on this book? Because it's a factual reality. That's why. All right, I got to go. My name is Leslie Williams. I'm a good woman. I'm not involved in any illegal or criminal activity whatsoever. I don't even drink. That's right. Um, I'm not a threat to myself or others, and I'm not mentally ill. But these are the kind of labels that they attempt to put on organized stalking, gang stalking targets in order to discredit them as a person, yes, and even to contain them. I'm in San Diego, California. My name is Leslie Williams. I make these videos to inform to expose the truth so the truth can be known. Thank you.